Dear friends, today we will discuss the generation of control signals for microprocessor 8085. Now, basically a microcomputing unit will have three components. One is the microprocessing unit. Here it is 8085. A memory which can be interfaced with the processing unit and input output ports. Now, in order to read or write data into the memory, we need to find its location. For that, we need address bus and to transport the data from memory to the processing unit and vice versa, we need data bus. Now, the data bus has to be compatible with the microprocessor that is being used and the input output port. Now the third is the control bus which is very important and it is basically used to enable the buffers of the input port and the memory units so that the data that is being read is transported into the data bus only after applying the read control signal and the data on the bus will be written into the memory only when the write control signal is applied. The same thing applies to the input output port also. To get the port address, we need a address bus. To get the data from the input port to the processing unit or vice versa, we require data bus. And again, to control the movement, we require control bus. So basically a system bus of a MPU consists of address bus, data bus and control bus. To summarize, the control bus is used to send the necessary signals to the I.O. or memory during the read and the write operation. And the separate control signals are required for I.O. and memory. Now let us see how we can generate the memory read signal. To generate memory read signal, we need three terminals of 8085. One is IO in bar, read bar and write bar. Now this provides us the status of the microprocessor. If the microprocessor is by default, it uh, always communicates with the memory. So this particular bus will be initially zero. The next is the read and the write. When the microprocessor is in the read mode, this particular line will be low. And when it is in the write mode, this particular write line will be low. But one thing we have to remember is the microprocessor can only perform one thing at a time. That is either it can be in the read mode or it can be in the write mode. So, what we can see here is there is no distinction between memory read or IO read write signals. Though we have to connect memory and IO separately, we need to generate two pairs of signals one for memory write operation and read operation, and another for IO write and IO read operation. Now, let us first try and understand how the memory read signal can be generated. So what we can see here is we have two bubbled NAND gates. Now both the bubbled NAND gates are connected in this fashion where one of the terminal is common to IO in bar and another terminal is connected to read bar and write bar. Now let's take a situation when the output is 0 0 and 1. This means the memory is presently communicating with sorry the microprocessor is presently communicating with memory and it is in the read mode. So both the zeros will be available here but what about this we only have one zero another one is one here. So both the zeros when enter the NAND gate it will be 1 1 and the output will be low. We all know this is the only situation when the output of the NAND gate goes low. So what we will get is a low at the output 
and this particular signal will be called as memory read. Now what about memory write? Similarly we will have the same circuit and when it is in the write mode this particular output will be low, read will be disabled and write is enabled by applying a zero signal here and we can see the input of this NAND gate is 0, 01, hence the output will be disabled. But what about this? It is having 00, 00 in it. So, what we will get is a 0 at the output, and now what we are getting is a memory write signal. Now, let us move on. How can we generate IO read signal? Again, we will have the same circuit, we will have the same configuration at the below also. But this unit and this unit will be separated by a NOT gate. Now let's see how IO read is generated. Now when the microprocessor is communicating with IO, this particular terminal will be 1 and this will be 0 and this will be 1. So presently microprocessor is communicating with IO. So this particular terminal which is 1 will be inverted here and we will get uh, 0 here, but when this particular terminal is 1, this two NAND gates are disabled. Now, when this is inverted, this particular input of the NAND gate is 0, and this particular input of the NAND gate is 0, and this is 0 and this is 1, meaning this one will be generating a low output, and which is nothing but IO read. What about the next one? similar circuit but only the signal that changes is this so again the upper section will be disabled but in the lower section this particular NAND gate is having both the inputs 0 and it will generate a 0 at the output and we will get a IO light signal so in this particular section we have understood that to control the memory and the IO separately, we need pair of signals for memory as well as pair of signals from for IO. And to control the memory, we have MEMR, which is nothing but memory read. We have MEMW, which is nothing but memory write. And we have IOR, which is input output read and input output write signal. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much.